Hello and welcome to the Climate Economy from the Hindu. I'm your host Kunal Shankar. The World Meteorological Organization declared 2024 to be the warmest year globally since records began with an average temperature approximately 1.55 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial baseline of 1850 to 1900. This marks the first time a calendar year has surpassed the critical 1.5 degree threshold set by the Paris Agreement. The India Meteorological Department too declared 2024 to be the warmest year in India since national records began in 1901. This follows a series of record-breaking heat-related events in the past five years alone. Both 2022 and 2023 were considered hottest on record only to be surpassed by 2024. Amid all this, there has been a global conversation about ensuring thermal comfort for all of humanity. Is it really possible? Indeed, is this even sustainable? India became the first country to develop a sustainable cooling framework in 2019. This was called the India Cooling Action Plan or ICAP. ICAP aims to reduce cooling demand by optimizing thermal requirements in sectors that need it the most. Buildings, transport and industries, for instance. It also envisions enhancing energy efficiency by promoting energy efficient cooling technologies such as those in air conditioners like the one right behind me. Indeed, the Hindu has been reporting that the one sector among consumer durables that has not seen a decline in the past year amid tepid consumption growth in its demand have been room air conditioners. And if this is indeed the case, are we prepared to deal with the surge in power demand and therefore a dire requirement to make ACs more efficient? The answer apparently is that we are not. It turns out India's air conditioner ratings are among the lowest in the world. That's right, I'm talking about the star ratings that determine not only the AC's energy efficiency, but also its price. Researchers at the University of California, Berkeley's India Energy and Climate Center have shed light on why this is the case and what can be done about it that could both benefit energy efficiency and also mitigate climate change. I caught up with Nikit Abhyankar and Jose Dominguez, the authors of this paper. Thank you so much, Professor Abhyankar uh, and Jose Dominguez uh, for joining us here. So if I can just dive into the into your uh, research paper that you've submitted, it is indeed very topical. Um, one of the challenges that has emerged uh, for a developing economy, a middle income country like India has indeed been providing uh, thermal comfort, right? Um, and in this effort to do so, uh, one has encountered challenges, particularly uh, with ensuring that there's thermal comfort, which is sustainable, um, or, or rather, which doesn't quite impact the climate in detrimental ways. So your, your research paper touches upon that. Maybe if you could elaborate on that, Professor Bianca, with you first, and then we can go to um, Jose as well. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Kunal, for having us. We are, we are definitely grateful. So what we found is over the last few years, India's electricity demand, and in particular, electricity demand for air conditioning and space cooling has been increasing very rapidly, mainly because of three reasons, rising temperatures, rising incomes and rising urbanization and all these three effects together uh, has caused india's peak electricity demand to increase much faster than anticipated and as you rightly mentioned it has broken all the records going forward what this trend is expected to continue and just in the next 10 years india will likely add about 150 million new air conditioners into the system. India sells about, there's a, absolutely mind boggling numbers. India adds about 12 to 15 million new air conditioners every year. And this market is growing at 10 to 15% per year. So just to give you a scale of things. So by 2035, air conditioners alone will likely add approximately 180 gigawatts to India's peak electricity demand. To give you a scale of things, this is higher than the entire peak electricity demand of the country of Japan, which is the third largest economy in the world. And so that is why just one appliance uh, can practically cause make or break situation. 
for India's grid as we have already seen in the last few years. So we started looking at what are the options to manage this massive demand growth while also not compromising the thermal comfort that the population of the country needs. Then obviously enhancing the energy efficiency of this increased electricity demand is one of the cheapest and the most reliable and cost-effective options for managing this space cooling demand. And this is when we started exploring that further. And what we found is uh, pretty substantial. Is there is significant room for ambitiously increasing India's air conditioning energy efficiency? And that can create uh, significant benefits for the grid as well as for consumers. And that may not necessarily uh, negatively impact the AC manufacturers. And give me 30 seconds to explain exactly what I mean by each of those statements. One is by enhancing uh, the energy efficiency of air conditioners in an ambitious manner and bringing it in line with the global best standards can reduce India's peak electricity demand by close to 60 gigawatts by 2035. And in addition to the long-term benefits, it can also create very immediate near-term benefits by reducing the peak demand by close to 10 gigawatts or so, starting as early as 2028. On the consumer side, typically the conventional wisdom says that the efficient products, more uh, higher efficiency products will always be more expensive and Indian market is extremely price sensitive. So consumers might actually lose out, but that is not the case. We looked at the historical evidence in multiple markets, in Japan, in Korea, in India even. And what we found is even in the past, whenever the energy efficiency has increased, that has not resulted in increased consumer prices. And there are multiple reasons. We'll be more than happy to go into why we find prices don't increase. But the point is prices are driven by multiple factors and efficiency is not the primary driver of retail electricity price. So it creates massive consumer benefits. How much is close to 225,000 crore uh, of consumer benefits uh, just between 2027 and 2035. Now, the third dimension, indeed substantial, and the third dimension of the problem is what happens to manufacturers. So there would obviously be some manufacturers that may not necessarily be producing highly efficient ACs, and they may stand to lose while there may be some obvious winners that are already producing such efficient ACs. So we started looking at the Indian market, and what we found is almost every major AC manufacturer, Indian, as well as international, are offering highly efficient ACs in the Indian market already. Nearly 20% of the market is already above five star, and that is also at extremely competitive prices. So for these three reasons, an ambitious increase in India's energy efficiency of air conditioners is warranted and can definitely be technically feasible and economically viable. Right. Well. Thank you so much. That's an that's a excellent overview of your work. You know, when I went through your report, and uh, of course, you've also written for us, uh, for the Hindu here, uh, Jose, one thing that you uh, sort of uh, uh, point out there, which was really startling to me, is the fact that uh, the five-star rating that we have in India is actually the baseline rating uh, in China um, and other developed economies, right? Like. So it almost, given how interconnected uh, we are uh, to global supply chains, it almost appears counterproductive to be selling uh, what might not quite be at global standards, considering that India wants to be competitive in several of these uh, you know, durable goods and um, high-end technologies. Cooling may not necessarily be a high-end technology, but it's definitely a necessity. And with climate change, more and more um, you know, tropics, uh, countries in the tropics are going to require them. And there are several other developing economies and India is very well positioned to be an exporter. It wants to be an exporting nation. So why hasn't India hasn't quite looked at this as a sort of an opportunity? What, you know, or, or the Indian industry, why has that been lacking? That is exactly the same question we, we have been asking uh, among us. 
and uh, we 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 really think this is a uh, a very a key moment for Indian policy to increase the the cooling requirements. Uh, as 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 Nikki already said, there are ten to fifteen million units sold every year, uh, yeah. and the level of penetration is still very low among five to ten percent in India. So we 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 think uh, as all these factors, economic growth, uh, the cooling requirements in the Indian cities factor in. Uh, we are possibly uh, starting a level of increase in the in the in the level of cooling needs uh, that was like China uh, 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Uh, right. Today they they have a penetration of uh, 100 about above 100. Uh, of units per household, which means they have more, more than one in, in average, uh, meaning that if India uh, makes that same uh, growth uh, over the, the, the next decade, uh, we will see a massive uh, need for energy uh, grid uh, increase and um, the moment 100 per thousand household I'm, I'm i'm trying to the penetration is 100 per, like we are at 10 percent you said so in comparison china is double that or triple that i'm trying to put that in perspective uh, but yeah okay yeah. it's more than 100 percent. so it's 130 oh, so one it's more than one per house yeah that's a, yeah ah, i see oh that's what I, think, I think it's also it's also slightly apples to oranges comparison because the data that we have for India is how many households own an air conditioners, whereas the data that we have for China is how many air conditioners exist in 100 uh, urban households, meaning that Indian households, some Indian houses may have more than one air conditioners, but that is not entirely captured in that data set. So again, so it is not perfectly comparable, but I think the point is, uh, as Jose pointed out, is uh, uh, the AC ownership in uh, uh, in Chinese households just skyrocketed in a short span of 15 years. And now it is close to 130, 140 ACs per 100 Chinese, uh, urban Chinese households, indicating majority of the households definitely have at least one air conditioners and many of them have more than one air conditioner multiple i see that's what that's what you meant when you said that okay go ahead i'm sorry for in, and, in yeah yeah and, and uh, in addition to that we, we have seen in india that the amount of uh, air conditioners for more wealthy group, groups is higher uh meaning that when you reach some some level of uh, income you you acquire an AC unit to, to increase the level of comfort in your house, meaning that uh, factoring all these factors, we will see a massive growth of the AC industry. And the moment of action is now as uh, the, the, uh, if, we, uh, if, if we keep uh, waiting for increasing the AC standards, the, the the more more units will be sold into the market and will be uh, locked in into other technologies uh, and the, and the, the the benefits will be uh, not as high as we were estimating so uh, that's one one of the most important things we why we are publishing this article right now so uh, I mean <laughs> yes so your article definitely implores uh, the Indian government to put in a policy framework which mandates uh, the five percent as the baseline for the uh, cooling industry here in India um, because as you have pointed out the industry itself has sort of failed to do so by itself despite nudges so uh, a sort of a mandatory five, uh, five star uh, immediately then sets the sort of the cascading ripple effect that you're talking about in your uh, in your paper. Um, the, one of the points where you said about how uh, the savings could be, um, you know, um, 60 gigawatts, uh, as uh, Professor Bianca pointed out. So I wanted to just bring in a certain other element, which is uh, I'm sure you you've already uh, you both of you are already aware of this the india cooling action plan um one, uh, india is one of the or probably the first country to bring out a sustainable um, cooling action plan considering climate change um that would have been actually a very ideal opportunity to have sort of 
factored this in, but um, India quite didn't do it, you know. So, um, but we've spoken we, we've spoken quite a lot about the fact that we are the first country. India is the first country to have brought this in. How do you view that? And one is, um, you know, from a sustainability point of view, uh, you, you, what you advocate for seems absolutely enmeshed into this policy, but it hasn't quite done so. Why is it divorced, uh, Professor right. Yankar? Maybe. Yeah, I think India Cooling Action Plan is, plan is an excellent uh, uh, is an excellent plan that comprehensively connects all the dots related with cooling. Uh, it could be related to our urban planning. It could be building envelope design, building materials, passive cooling, adaptive thermal comfort, cooling uh, uh, technologies and equipment that we're talking about, as well as developing or making sure uh, even outdoor uh, 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 thermal comfort, thermal comfort as an outdoor heat index becomes manageable for any of the outdoor uh, labor and other activities that happen. It's an ex urban heat, ex everything. But I don't think it is also uh, 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 fully right to expect India Cooling Action Plan to prescribe specific policy solutions on a specific puzzle, uh, piece of the broader cooling puzzle. I think the objective of the Cooling Action Plan will also putting all these issues together and creating a framework for thinking about them holistically. And then each individual line ministry, each individual agency will uh, do their own thing while keeping India Cooling Action Plan uh, as their broader guiding document. And I believe that kind of did achieve that purpose to a certain extent. Now, having said that, though, the Indian AC efficiency standards have been pretty uh, slow uh, to respond. And that is right. But I think this is where uh, uh, what we call as the classic market failures, right? So several cases, the markets fail to recognize either the environmental externality or the broader uh, 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 grid benefits, etc. And that's why markets are not going to act just by themselves. And this is true not only for ACs or other uh, energy efficiency issues, but this is also true for several renewable energy as well as other uh, environmental actions. And including in China, right? I mean, we obviously, uh, as you pointed out, China's one star level is almost equivalent to India's five star level, meaning that majority of the products that are sold in India wouldn't even be eligible to be sold in China, despite the fact that bulk of the components, as well as in some cases, full products are directly imported from China and they cannot be sold. Uh, so I think this is this is quite ironic. Having said that, though, China's AC efficiency standards were also not very ambitious until five years ago. So China has also recently started on taking such ambitious steps on revising their standards. And what we are arguing is India already missed the first bus on solar panel manufacturing as now slowly catching up only now. India also missed the first bus on battery manufacturing and now slowly catching up now. India missed the first bus on EV manufacturing and now slowly catching up now. So India should not miss this bus on efficient technology and especially efficient AC manufacturing. China has recently started it and now it is India to, India's turn to quickly catch up and expand. And what is interesting is India's AC market also gives it a pretty unique advantage, meaning that India's large domestic market also makes it ready to be able to export to other markets because the domestic market is large enough that gives the manufacturer scale as well as uh, uh, other other flexibility. Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, there's Latin American countries, African countries, and that's where India could truly establish its global leadership. And that's all we have on this episode of the Climate Economy. If you like this show and would like to hear more about how climate change is reshaping our economy, do hit the bell icon on the Hindu's YouTube channel and also do write to us or better still send us a video recording of your question to climateeconomy at the hindu.co.in and we'll do our best to get them answered. Bye for now.